All right, welcome to day 10 of Advent of Code 2024. Let's lock in.
Okay, today was not so bad, but I think I could have implemented things a little bit faster um, if I had used probably recursion for part one, and if I had not tried a bad approach for part two and had to restart. But I'm glad I decided to scrap the wrong solution. I still don't know why it's wrong, um, but sometimes you just gotta like scrap it and move on. So part one I got in four and a half minutes, part two in 10 minutes, um, got ranks of 250 and 600, which I think are pretty good. So let's start with part one. Today we are working in a grid yet again, and we have to find the number of hiking trails in a topographic map. So a hiking trail is defined as any path through the grid that starts at a zero and ends at a nine where you increase by one at every step. So for example, in this grid, we have two hiking trails. One starts from this zero and goes to the nine over here, passes through all the numbers in between, and the other starts at the same zero but ends up at the nine over here on the right. For part one, we have to count for each zero, the number of uh, trailheads that it is able to reach. So for example, this zero over here is able to reach two nines. So its um, score would be two. We have to gather all of the zeros and add together their scores to get the answer for part one. So to do this, I used a breadth for search. Low key could have used recursion and it might have been a little bit faster to implement, but I'll talk through the BFS solution. Essentially, we have a function here to compute the score of any uh, number in the grid. So first we have to verify that it starts at a zero because zeros are the only places that uh, trailheads can be. That's this condition over here. And then we just count the number of nines that are reachable um, through paths that increase by one at every step. So we do this with a breadth research. Actually, this is depth research. So I actually lied a little bit. Um, but the difference is negligible. Um, we have a stack here which keeps track of the current uh, I guess, place that we're searching, and we just want to find all the neighbors that increase by one, and then we will mark those as visited. So the steps in a typical depth for search are you take the top element of the stack, you pop it off, you see if we've already visited it. Low key, this was not necessary. I think if we remove this, it should still run. Yeah, okay, returns the same answer, so that's unnecessary. Um, we check if we have ended at a nine. If so, then we have seen one more nine, and we're good. Um, otherwise, we go through all of the neighbors of the current, uh, I guess, location that we're searching. We do this using a DD array. This is pretty typical for my implementations. You just look through all the neighbors by looking at all four cardinal directions. If the neighbor is within the grid, so that's this check over here, I wrote a little in grid function to check that the coordinates are in bounds. Um, as long as the neighbor is in the grid, then we will add it to the stack. Um, assuming the neighbor is one greater than the current because we can only hike up slowly along these hiking paths. So we have this function here which counts the number of nines that are reachable from any given location um, and it's zero if the starting location is not a zero. So now we iterate through all the elements in the grid, add together the score, and that's it for part one. For part two, I decided to use recursion because I was getting wrong answers implementing it um, using DFS again. So for part two, here's what we need to do. Uh, instead of counting the number of nines reachable from every zero, we need to count the number of distinct hiking trails. So for a single nine destination, there could be multiple ways to reach it, and we need to count all those ways separately. So for example, in this grid, starting at this zero, um, there are three different ways to reach the nine. One goes like this, the other goes like this, um, and the final one goes like this, and we need to count all of those separately. How we do this um, at least how I implemented it was with a recursion. So this function rating ij takes any element in the grid and counts the number of ways to reach it uh, or reach a nine starting from that point. So you're allowed to start at points other than zero. Um, this is just for the simplicity of the recursion. So if we're already at a nine, then there's only one way to end up there. We just have to end at the nine because you can't go up anymore. Otherwise, we loop through all of the neighbors to the current point using the same DD array, um, look at all four cardinal directions, and then if the neighbor is a step up, then we say, okay, well, that's one extra way we could get to a nine, and we just add the rating of that neighbor. And again, rating is the number of ways to get to a nine from that point, so this is valid. We also have this LRU cache um, annotation over here. For Python, that just means you cache the result of the function because this is a deterministic function, so we know the number of ways to reach a nine from any point. Um, if we've already computed that, then we don't have to compute it again. Let's see what happens if we run it with and without. So without on my actual inputs. So let's run it with um, the LRU cache on my actual input. That takes less than a second. Um, let's get rid of it. Oh, that also runs pretty fast. Okay, I guess this recursion didn't need to cache the results. 
Oh, well, I'm going to leave it in there uh, for the sake of principle. And again, at the end, we just return the rating um, of every single point in the grid, so long as it starts from a zero. So we do need to do this check outside the recursion function because we will use this recursion function on other starting points than zero. Um, so we just do that check at the end while we're completing the answer, and that's it for part two. And that's it for day 10. If you want to see my code, as always, it's published in the GitHub repository, which I have linked to in the description. So be sure to check that out. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below and I'll try my best to answer. Um, that's it for day 10. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for day 11.